We'll take a deeper look at lecture. This is the inform step of format. It's a left mode step. Here's a quote from uh, K.E. Ibel on the craft of teaching. You must excuse the occasional unstifled yawn among students. You see, by the time they complete four years of college, they will have endured almost 2,000 hours of classroom instruction, and without question, most of that time will have been spent listening to lectures. Why do we do so much lecturing? Three reasons. Most of us were taught that way. It seems easy to prepare, and it is still accepted as the key to learning even today in 2010. What does research tell us then are the qualities of a fine lecturer? The lecturer who does a fine job has a personal way of being. That It's clear that he, he or she loves the content, cares about the students, is passionate, and is able to convey that passion, and able to be authentic as he or she talks about the content. The intellectual prerequisites, the ability to conceptualize the material, to ask sophisticated questions, to convey concepts with the details couched in them rather than the other way around, to tell students how the facts fit together, always relating back to the big picture, reiterating the critical parts over and over, and clarifying the complex issues. What is the purpose of the informed, the informed step of format? It's to give learners the knowledge and information they need to improve their odds for living their lives with honor and success. It's the explaining part of the format cycle. Research on successful lecturing. Remind your students of what they already know. Explain it so they see the information in the context of larger issues. Teach only what they can comfortably grasp in the allotted time. Two or three important points with illustrated examples, always use images. They are powerful. Even if you have to go and, and scratch something out by drawing arrows and lines, be sure you use images with everything. Know your material well and explain it to the students in the way you learned it. Even tell them, this is how I learned this. Have students learn to create their own metaphors as you go along in the lecture. Always have them phrase their comments and questions in their own words and end with concrete action, requests, suggestions, and possibilities. And trust your students to learn some of the key materials on their own. How do you do this? You want to build in fascinating questions for them to answer before you begin. For example, how did Darwin figure out the differences in finches? How did he figure out that those differences were related to adaptation? What process in that man delivered that insight to him? Was it innate? Or could anyone have had that same insight delivering process? Then have them listen to you talk about Darwin the man. Make the information you deliver provocative. Have them comparing and contrasting, analyzing and synthesizing. Never just listening and trying to remember. Don't cover the material, rather build scaffolds to help the students learn it as they begin to use it. Now here's two different teachers from Ken Bain, one of them believing that you have to begin by telling and explaining, which I call bl the blah blah part, and another believing that it needs to be discovered as you go along. Of course, format believes you start in quadrant one with a, um, uh, an experiential activity that will get them going and excited about it that is a conceptualization of the content rather than the details of the content itself. But look at this from Ken Bain. One anatomy teacher says, the structure of the human body is known. Students simply must learn it. They have to absorb a lot of facts. We don't discuss it. I simply present the primary objectives of the course and the students have to memorize large chunks of information. The students confess that they had trouble remembering primary information several months later. Now here's a different teacher, also quoted by Ken Bain, also an anatomy teacher. The structure of the human body must be understood as a system. Help the students build their understanding by hearing real life problems. 
explain, but simplify and clarify by citing clinical cases of what could go wrong. What does this fact help you to understand? What problems does what I just told you help you address? Students had to struggle with real clinical cases still with a large body of information, but they had to learn it by reasoning through real problems. Build into the lecture the beginning of the skills that they will be learning. Don't perform the material in front of them. Rather, raise questions that will help them reason through the process. So they will be able to tell a story of how they came to do that. Raise questions that will help them reason through the process. Here's a quote from Robert Devine, a, a great math teacher. When I finish this process, I want the students to feel like they have invented calculus and that only some accident of birth kept them from beating Newton to the punch. Now that is the way to do the lecture. Some practice that can happen during the lecture as well. Again, from Ken Bain, students had to struggle with real clinical cases with a large body of information, but they had to learn it by reasoning through, remember, real problems. Are there ways that you can present your lecture information to generate real problem-solving issues for the students? For example, the argument between Jefferson and Adams concerning the ability or inability of the people to make serious decisions regarding the governance of their new country. Could real issues be raised today in 2010 that are comparable to that argument? I think so. Make high use of images in your lecturing, yours and theirs. Use images, metaphors, analogs. Have students take notes on the bare outlines of things with various graphic organizers. These are two of the 20 that we include in our software, our creative uh, writing software, lesson writing software. Teach the students how to mind map your lectures. Life cycles, for example, prediction paths. to be all talk. Interactive methods that connect students' talk to the information are far more effective. And far more effective, of course, is what you want. Now remember that format goes through the cycle of moving from experience to reflection on experience to conceptualizing to acting. The questions that we ask teachers to ask of themselves are why do the students need to know this? What exactly is it I'm teaching them? How will they learn it and use it in their lives? And if they do, what will they become that they're not now? So the idea is to travel that cycle. And of course, the lecture is only the two left part of it, you see? So we have discovered now that the lecture is the learning act itself. So that you need to go through the entire lecture and it the entire cycle, excuse me, and it is not enough to just lecture. The lecture is just a part of the whole cycle. Okay, thanks very much for watching this part on the two left, the fourth step of format. I hope this helps in your role as a teacher or trainer. If you have any questions, be sure to visit our website for contact information about learning.com.